everyone. Good morning. Good evening, everyone. Hello. Hi, Christelle. Yes, sorry. I'm I was lost. Okay, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, everyone. My name is Crystal, and I'm your host of the Crystal Clear Show. Let's welcome today's guest, Janet Soral, who is an e-commerce advocate, digital influencer, and digital leader. At her highest value and at her best, she provides independent insights. Janet Torral is a lead trainer, certified e-commerce and digital marketing professional program, certified executive and team coach with Marshall Goldsmith Stakeholder Centered Coaching, and executive director, certified speaker, coach, behavioral analysis consultant, trainer, youth facilitator with the John Maxwell team. Let's welcome Janet Toral. How are you, Janet? I'm great. I'm great, Christelle, and I'm so glad. Thank you for the opportunity to be your guest in the episode 25 of your sh of your show. No? Yes, I'm so excited. It's been a long time since we last chatted, and I'm so excited to hear from you again, Janet. Let's share about your business. You are the digital guru of the Philippines, and you are an advocate of e-commerce. Before, when I first heard about e-commerce, I was like, what's an e-commerce? But so I learned about it through you, and it's so, it, it's so interesting because everything nowadays is through internet, and there's so many things that we, we learn every day in, through this um, system. So, but first, I would like to ask you my number one question. If you are a superhero, who would you be and why did you choose him or her, Janet? Ako, that's the very famous uh, superhero question. And I think for most women, the common answer will be uh, Wonder Woman. No? <laughs> and some will use the local one, uh, which is uh, Darna. Darna. So, so, I think... Um, um, for 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 the superhero, I think I would like to rather than superhero personalities, I would like to refer to, to media personalities. Um, one of the programs that I watch every morning is uh, Ted Filon and DJ Chacha. So the way uh, Ted Filon uh, advocates for the truth advocates for doing due diligence before imparting data i think i treated him some sort of a superhero because of uh, of his advocacy for truth fairness transparency but at the same time uh, promoting christian values uh, finding ways to help people so if i want to become a superhero i think i would like to i, I take inspiration from uh, broadcaster ted Filon. wow Wow, that's that's very new because oh, yeah, like you, what you said earlier, most of the time we as women we choose Wonder Woman or me I chose the Elastic Woman, but you you chose the broadcaster the Ted Filon. How oh, it's so amazing. Well, let's get into this um, quote. Do you have a favorite quote, Janet? And why did you choose that quote? I have a lot of uh, favorite quotes, but uh, usually when I do my speaking engagements, um, especially when conducting uh, sales-related training, I, I find myself often quoting uh, Anthony Ayaniro. Anthony Ayaniro is considered as uh, one of the popular sales guru in the, in the world. And um, one, of his, uh, one of the books that he authored, uh, Eat Their Lunch, he mentioned something like, uh, he tries to emphasize that we always have to add value. And one thing he mentioned is that for every customer you gain, you work harder than your competition. And for every customer you lost, your competition work harder than you. So I think that's a, that's a very uh, important reminder for me every day that if I don't get what I want, 
it means I did not work hard enough. No? Oh, if it went to another person rather than blaming connect, because sometimes when people don't get what they want, they blame the, this person has connection, this person has a backer, this reason, that reason, bordering, sometimes the rational is towards unfairness. No? But I always remind people when they tend to complain about how others smart, outsmarted them because they had better connections. For me, that's a sign that the other person worked harder than you. That's and um, really work their network. So that's that is all. Oh, I find that quote very humbling because uh, rather than falling into victim mode or a self pity mode or blame everyone else, blame everyone except myself. <laughs> or you know, although you don't really, you don't. Of course, you don't have to be so hard on yourself either. But you yes. have to be realistic uh, enough to take responsibility when things go your way and when things don't go your way. Yes, I agree with that. And it's actually um, a good thing that you mentioned that that when our competition got your your client, they worked harder. And when you got your client, it means you worked very hard for to get that client. Because most of the time we get complacent, isn't it? And mm -hmm. when we get complacent, we have enough of what we what we have. We tend to relax a little bit and then so the competition will work harder than and then they will get the new clients than us. Mm -hmm. And it's it's funny that you mentioned earlier that most of the time we blame on the circumstances, isn't it? Mm -hmm. the, rather than ourselves, because actually in reality, it's all on us. We have the abilities and we have everything the internet we have everything that we need but still we tend to blame on the situation that we are in but i see so many news especially there in the philippines during the pandemic a lot of vendors uh, market vendors thrive because they found new ideas they sold things they became millionaire and then some people are still poor because they blame the pandemic so it's really not the situation it's really not the pandemic but it's actually you yourself what did you do during these times during this hardest times did you try to evolve did you try to learn and strategize we're going to into that later or did you just fall into this it's because of the world. The world is so unfair. The world is so, oh, it's just me and me against the world, isn't it? So I'm so happy to, to ask you this. Why did you choose to become an e-influencer, a, a digital influencer? Why, why the, the e-market, um, Actually, when I, when I started becoming uh, active online, at that time, uh, maybe in the mid, in the late 90s, uh, we really recognized that if we want the online community to prosper, because the internet was just introduced at that time, we really have to push for e-commerce adoption in the country. And that includes also the passage of the e-commerce law. And of course, to pass a law, you have to talk to a lot of people. Basically, you have to influence a lot of people. So to influence people at large, I built my own website, which at that mm -hmm. time, I'm still active now. I mean, it's still there, digitalfilipino.com. I publish uh, two books on e-commerce and I publish also a documentary on Philippine internet history. Mm -hmm. And then later on, I also ventured uh, into blogging. So because to get to get a lot of things done, you can you can get them done faster by talking to people, you know, uh, working with people, working with decision makers, key influencers, looking for fellow advocates, looking for champions who can who can uh, take the cause uh, forward or to take it to a bigger to take it to a bigger stage. Uh, take it to a bigger audience so it's not necessarily you um, you also have to play backup uh, or be at the backstage of people who can take the topic to a bigger audience so 
And that law eventually uh, came into life in the year 2000 when we finally have an e-commerce law in our country. So we're celebrating the 23 years of the Philippine e-commerce law. That's why I'm orga- I usually organize the e-commerce entrepreneur summit to continuously celebrate the passage of that law so that uh, people will always remember that uh, whatever we have right now um whatever online perks that we are enjoying we are we we have to use this with full accountability with full responsibility and there are laws that uh, also are holding us accountable and of course there's not it's the cyber crime law data privacy law uh, holding us accountable so that we do business right and at the same time to run after those also who are messing up the the digital ecosystem like the scammers the spammers uh, etc wow well, it's it's 23 years already but before that of course you worked very very hard before we we gained this uh, this e-commerce law and I'm, I really admire you for being one of the pioneers who pushed through this, this law in the Philippines. Of course, that, that is a, a lot of people work on that law, no? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But you were one of them. And it's, yes, it's yes. just humbling to be part of your circle. It's, um, so that's, that's the journey. But you this journey of e-commerce, but what's your journey as an entrepreneur? How did you start your journey, Janet? Mm, actually, my entrepreneurial journey, masyado siyang malawak. No? So, so I guess let's focus on the digital aspects of the journey. No? Um, uh, I think my first venture into to really serious entrepreneurship was when I decided to put up a computer shop. Uh, mm-hmm. At that time, there was no internet yet. No, when I decided to put up an, uh, a computer shop, but at the time that I was trying to sell it already, um, I advertised it in a buy and sell newspaper. We got an inquiry because I was trying to sell the business, and I was so young at that time. I I haven't reached my I have, yeah, I was in my 20s or 21s, I think. Wow. And then, um, and I was scam. You know? The person who bought was not really who who he was. No, He issued us a company check. And, I, and because I know the company, I thought I was really dealing with a legitimate person. Yeah. And um, uh, after doing the handshake the next day, all the computers uh, disappeared inside the shop no and then uh and then i called the company because i have this check and then that's when i found out that this was a stolen check you know? oh. but uh, at that time i just move on and uh you know rather than rather than uh burden myself but uh, at that time also uh, i was already working on my first speaking engagement for a public event um and then that speaking engagement paved the way for me to start writing to publications and get paid for it and started getting invited also to more speaking events and that also eventually yield to uh, consulting uh, Mm -hmm. engagements because at that time I was talking a lot of technical things like uh, setting up a wide area network uh, based email, email system because at that time you know the internet was not mature yet you really have to set this all up via your via via having a server software and then create and then doing this uh, wide area network uh, setup so it was a little bit complicated at that time mm, but eventually but, but because of the exposure to public speaking to writing and then doing consulting uh, that that uh, eventually uh, grew and then um, and also publish more books and then started organizing my own events and then until certain entities started partnering with me to deliver uh, public training programs and then uh, later on i also diversified and invested into leadership training and invested in programs of tony robbins uh, john maxwell marshall goldsmith sally hogshead and the likes to diversify my portfolio so um, nowadays i'm really more into coaching i'm part owner of a of a company which is also a research firm 
um, but 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 so far you can say that I'm I'm really more of a laid back, uh, laid back uh, an entrepreneur because uh, it's not re I'm not really how do you call it it's not really my full time thing so it's more of if it's if it's there it's there if the opportunities are there they are there so mm -hmm. I think I'm at the I'm at the stage of my life where um, we're taking it. Uh, nice and slow but of course there's still that commitment because you know like we have a commitment with the maxwell leadership team i annually i license the live to lead uh so we're now doing it on our fourth year already so there's that's also a huge commitment so i'm now kind of selective of programs that i advocate in especially i especially focus on programs that can help people grow further Wow, what an amazing um, trajectory from from this um, this business that failed, and now you're in really developing leaders. So it's true when one door closes, several doors opens, and God gives you this other opportunities. So is this the most important lesson that you've learned from your life uh, from this? Um, scam that you had in the in the beginning of your of your career or is there anything else that you have learned the most important a lesson that you have um learned a mo the most important lesson that you have learned janet mm, i think uh what what i have really learned is that the idea that you always have to add value to others if you want to maintain a relationship, um, usually the moment you stop adding value, it also affects the kind of relationship that you can have with people, like mm -hmm. how the the depth of your relationship, how often you keep in touch, is also connected on how much value you add. So when when you stop adding value, you might end up. Um, excluding you know removing yourself from from a different number of circles mm -hmm. but if you continuously strive to add value uh, then you can find yourself getting more in more and more circles than than you want to so it's not that you have to get into as many circles as possible i guess it depends on what kind of what what stage you are in your life but i think um but I think it's really important also that uh, you 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 really prioritize where do you want to spend your time, to whom, uh, and on and on what topics do you want to spend your time more on. I love it. Prioritize where and to whom you want to spend your time, because most mm -hmm. of the time, like like we said, for us, especially the young entrepreneurs, we. We are all over. We spend time here and there, and and sometimes we even for, because we're too busy building up our career, our, our businesses, we often forget the ones who are more most important, especially our family, our kids, because mm -hmm. we want we are too focused on on what we want to achieve. But it's I love it when you say prioritize with whom you want to spend your time and where you want to spend your time. Are you doing this career for for yourself or are you saying you want to be the best that you can be because you want to give the, be the best life for your children, but you're not spending time with them. So it's really a matter of prioritizing your time. That's and, right, that's right. And so I love that. So. How has this failure shaped your life, Janet? Um, I think failure is uh, can be really humbling, you know, because more often, more often than not, you know, all of us have big dreams, and of course, more often than not, we all want to be successful. We want to achieve our targets, but um, sometimes you don't get get it the way you want to. Like maybe. I can say that, oh, I want to start a Facebook Live and I want to have a thousand viewers every week. 
No? But sometimes, more often than not, uh, it, it doesn't really happen in, in a snap. No? Or let's say you have an event or you have a program, you want 100 people signing up, but it's not happening the way you want it to be. Um, of course, you can go into the meeting, meeting, greeting details, like what you did not do that may have prevented you from getting the numbers, what, what you did not invest in that also prevented you from getting the numbers that you want. But uh, anyway, uh, failures uh, can teach us uh, a lot of things. So, so we need to have humility. Humility is very important in accepting those failures, and uh, instead of you know um, beating yourself up because of those failures, um, evaluate them constructively and then re-strategize from there you can you can change course or you can try it again do it again and uh, with the improvement or tweaks that you have thought of i love that failures well failures teaches us we we know for in my experience and in your experience and failures taught me so many things um and like what you said humility is very important acknowledging that okay i failed now what and then evaluating what what's the 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 result of this failure why did i fail what can i do next what do i what can i change to avoid this and re-strategizing i i really love this steps that you that you gave so failures teaches us we know that and humility is very important that's that's very very deep because most of the time we say oh i failed again it's and it's my fault and I, it just hit my head sometimes i hit my head on the wall and say no i'm just so dumb and so stupid but no it's actually as something that can propel you also because most of the time when we fail we we have this light bulbs also that that happens and even um edison failed 1000 times so who are we not to fail don't we and and this inventor invented the, the light bulb so and fail 1000 times so why can't we fail and then invent and reinvent and strategize this true true yes so let me ask you one more time would you say that you are already successful in your work and in life janet um you know, I, I would like to go back to what we learned from John Maxwell uh, in Live to Lead uh, two years ago about success. He says that success is not a destination. It's a, it's a process, right? It's the journey. You know? So every step you take in that journey um, and you complete that step is a success. You know? so, so I think uh, we haven't the success is just accumulating <laughs> like like for example you know getting get guesting in a in this uh, facebook live today is a success you know because <laughs> uh, because uh, a lot of us who want to do not just want to do facebook live and just be a talking head no we want to we want to talk to people we want to add value to other people's uh, facebook live so if 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 they realize that you can add value and you're considered to add value to their content then that is a success for me so and and we are always reminded also not to live based on your laurels from yesterday because if you if you kind of keep on hanging hanging on them it's like uh, you're living in the past when we should live in the present so that we can have a better future right you, you right. try to make every day a masterpiece so even though i would talk about um passage of laws in the past and maybe celebrating it but it does not mean that i'm hanging on or holding on to the past you know i'm living in the present but just but giving a gentle reminder uh why why are we doing it you know to give a better perspective why why do we continue doing it why do we continue to run our free summits why do we continue educating advocating so that there's a bigger 
uh, backstory uh, to it, although we don't really hype so much about about the backstory. Mm-hmm. Mm, so, so our success in the past is already done. You know what? Maybe it is relevant then, but may not be relevant at this time. So we we need to focus more on the things that we want to achieve and uh, be successful in in the present days of our lives. No, what is required of us now, right? So whether you are required to teach more people now or to help more people now or to be a, a, a better person in your personal life to your family, then that's where we should focus on being successful at, at this present time. Yes, definitely. But I would clearly say for me, you are a success. Not only you have published several books, you have coached several hundreds and even thousands of young uh, entrepreneurs. I admire what you do and I I admire your advocacy. And uh, I'm so grateful for for your mentorship because I I am part of those young entrepreneurs that you have mentored. And I am just so grateful to have you and to learn from you. One last question. It's already been more than 20 minutes and it feels like we just started i would like to ask you what are the three best practices that you could give young entrepreneurs or even those who are already ripe in their age and who would who would like to excel and can gain more and can this uh, practices could be something that they can implement immediately Mm-hmm. And, to, I think, mm-hmm. and to have I a think life. Yes. I think what I'm gonna share there is something that we have talked about in the past. No. So I think um whenever you get lost, no, because sometimes we all we and then we fall off we fall off track or we get off track no yes. with what we need to do because of the maybe there was a, sh- a shiny object <laughs> somewhere that got your attention and it deviated you from the main path no so i think when so so for so i think there are there are things that you could always um put yourself in alignment in so that even if you're lost you could always go back in track so number one from an from an entrepreneur entrepreneur perspective uh of course your product management no always update the products and services that you are handling or that you are developing. Um, Always review it. Maybe there are things that you want to work on more or maybe there are things that you want to let go. Um, Like, like, remember, Christelle, in Maxwell Leadership, we talked about how many products we have here, right? So Mm -hmm. sometimes you have, maybe you have 100 products, but of course you cannot work on all of them. And then, of course, at the same time, you also have other products and services that may be outside of those that you are carrying. So it's good to have uh, product management uh, so that, so that whenever you're lost, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to focus on. So reviewing your products and services list can can really help you, you know, reflect on what you want to work on. And then um, I will also go back to the relationships that we have, you know, uh, people that you've been talking to that maybe you want to do business with in the next six months, people you've done business in the past, you've done business with in the past, or maybe people you want to do business with right now. When I talk about doing business, may not necessarily be from a customer's point of view. Maybe they are your partners, they are your suppliers, or maybe they are part of your network whether it's a personal network or a professional network um it would be healthy to maintain a list of maybe 100 or 200 people that you regularly want to network with even done on even carried out in social media of course they might change from time to time but if you're lost you can list down people that you've been in touch with for the past one month or past two months and who do you want to keep on communicating with and you can also tag uh, products and services that you've been discussed where you see uh, a potential um, partnership or potential client uh, 
client relationship in certain products no or maybe just or maybe a potential referral partner or something so i think if you if you do daily product management mm -hmm. and then you do uh daily uh relationship management um I think you 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 won't get lost. Of course, you can say that oh, you should market yourself every day. <laughs> but uh, but you know we have different ways of marketing ourselves. I mean, mm -hmm. others market themselves through social media. But mm -hmm. but I think if you focus on um, keeping in touch with people, you know, building relationships with people, that's you doing your word. Of, that's word of mouth marketing in action. So you can also you can also focus on that um, because people who really like you. Uh, in bad times, they wanna people would want to do business with people they like. And in good times, people would want to do business with people they like. And more often than not, it's not just it is not just measured by what people saw on your Facebook profile. But more often than not, they remember those who they keep in touch with. They have they they often talk or people that they talk to, because that relationship is is established, more current, more interactive. Therefore, it has more um, weight in terms of em emotional weight, no emotional right. value, which cannot be, which cannot be easily replaced by everything that we post online <laughs> or yeah. what we what people see online. Yeah. So there are just two then. That's the most important thing for you. So daily relationship. You have your relationship tracking. You have you can do your daily um, product management. Product management, yes. Yeah. And then, um, of course, on the on the third one, you know, just keep keep your curiosity going. Keep on learning. Keep on experimenting. Experiment on some small things here and there that you might want to try out. Um, maybe you want to do a Facebook Reels or you want to do your own live or maybe if you are into live streaming, you will try out a specific strategy if this strategy will work, you know, mm -hmm. or maybe you're learning a new app. So, or maybe you're writing a training, you're developing a training manual or you're developing a book. So just do something where you can put your creative juice on. Wow. Yes, I love it. So let's uh, get back to it. So daily product management, daily um, networking, maintaining healthy relationships is number relationship, two. Yeah, relationship yes. management. Rela relationship management and keeping your curiosity. Keep on experimenting. Keep on learning. I love that. Well, Janet, it's already the end of our, our, our session and it's so amazing it felt like it was just two minutes ago that we started it's already 30 minutes and i really want to thank you for sharing your knowledge with us thank you for being my guest my special guest on the crystal clear podcast and as always everyone i would like to ask you for those who have just joined in i just see some people have just joined in do you have one crystal clear gem that you could share with our viewers if they have missed the whole 30 minutes is there something that you would like to share that they would learn from you now janet um meaning a website or something like that is um yes or something uh, a really something that can um that they can apply now if they have missed the whole 30 minutes of our show and if they want to learn from you what would it be and can you share it um, always work with people work with partners collaborate with people because you can get things done faster if you partner with people and amen to that because i have also learned that networking it's it's for me it's fun because i am an extrovert so i it's easy for for me but it's really you learn from people when you just talk to them and when you just or you're just in the same room with them, just just go out there and and step out of the comfort zone. If you're in, an introvert, just get out there and, and network with people because it opens the whole dimension, isn't it, in your entrepreneurial business. So thank you once again, Janet. Can, can you tell me one 
one thing about your business can we invite them in your um podcast um i know that you have shows and then there's live to lead coming up soon yes yes uh, live to lead is uh, coming out so if they want to learn more about it they can visit uh, leadersaddvalue.com if they want to learn more about live to lead this is an annual leadership event so if you are investing in your personal growth as a leader or you know someone who you really want to grow as a leader i encourage you to get them to attend the uh, live to lead it's a it's a, a major uh, leadership event yearly and for me i've been learning a lot from it so much and i built great relationship with people also because of that event and that that is why i rem- i continue to be passionate about uh, live to lead Yeah, so if you want to learn more, thank you, Christelle. You can visit leadersadvalue.com. Wow, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And see you all next time. Remember, where you are doesn't matter. Where you're going is. So always get crystal clear wherever you go. Have a great day. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you.